one. Let's go. Let's go. You are about to experience the uncensored conversations, stimulating wit, and the thought-provoking wisdom. Bold, raw, and uncut. Right now, on the Lance Curve Show. This is so sad. An abusive husband kills his wife only 11 hours after a judge granted her a restraining order. If I can't have you, no one else can. Unfortunately, this is the disturbing perception of ownership abusers commonly display with their domestic partners. Instead of accepting the breakup, parting ways peacefully, and moving on with life, Abusers seek revenge in the vilest way possible. In many disheartening instances, victims do not make it out alive. Now, a woman named Lisa Scales is the latest murdered victim of domestic violence. According to WREG, Lisa Scales was making the necessary changes needed to separate from her abusive husband, Mario Scales. The 27-year-old mother of five had gotten a restraining order against Mario, 30, because she feared for her safety. Then just 11 hours later, her greatest fear was realized. It had been reported that Scales was shot outside of Mario's stepsister, Diane Moore's Memphis, Tennessee home. During a news interview, she revealed she has a distant relationship with her stepbrother, but his mother married her father and their parents have been living in her home. Although Diane reportedly tried to reason with Mario, she admitted it was obvious he was going to harm Lisa. I tried my best to talk to him. I never know. I never knew what he was going to do to her. He wasn't even supposed to be at my house, said Diane Moore. Lisa Scales was pronounced dead at the scene. Mario made a chilling confession about the shooting to police, admitting that he'd shot Lisa 16 times. Moore expressed remorse for the family and Lisa's five children who now have to grow up without their mother or father. My heart goes out to the family and the children. They're not only without a mom, they're without a daughter. I know a mother's love, and when your child is taken away from you, that's a pain that nobody can soothe, she said. In relationships where domestic violence is present, many women suffer the possibility of being killed when they decide to part ways with their abuser. Despite the devastating toll the abuse takes on the victim, the abuser cannot understand why the victim would want to leave the relationship. Unfortunately, Many abusers retaliate by killing their partner. Disturbing statistics show the number of domestic violence-related deaths continues to rise each year. I did a little research and went to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, and they have a number. And it's 1-800-799-7233. Again, that's 1-800-799-7233. 7233 and you can take it from there but there's no excuse no excuse at all to stay with someone who is abusing you now let me just um i had to say that let me just add my two cents in and let's see if we can get a good discussion going and if you want us to talk about this topic if you have any personal experience either side let me know 407-590-0755. Text me or call me. You'll get through easier with a text message, but I have no no problem with you calling me. And if you want to share your story, we can do so. If you want to do so anonymously, I'll honor all your requests to be or remain anonymous. I don't blow anybody up or put their stuff out there, and I'll put it out there the way that you want me to put it out there. Because you see, these days, with so much going on, there's so many distractions and so many things going on, we still have domestic violence and we still have people being killed for no reason at all. 
Now, I, I can't identify with these monsters who would do something like that because I'm the kind of guy that if you don't want to be with me, what's the point of me trying to force you when I know deep down you just don't want to be with me? That's a normal course of action. Yes, you might plead and say, hey, why? I want to be with you. Don't end it. But after, you know, a couple of minutes, a couple of hours or a couple of days of distant contact and you know that this person doesn't want to be with you, suck it up. Move on. There are many women out here in the world. I'm speaking as a man, right? And and like for me personally, like if Mrs. Scurve didn't want to be around me anymore, it would break my heart. But I'd have to say, well, if I really love you, I have to let you go if you don't want to be with me. But thank, thank God she's not feeling that way. And I'm going to do everything within my power to keep her from not feeling that way. See, you have to imagine this as a man. If you don't want your woman, your wife, your significant other to not want to be around you, why are you doing the things to push her away? You are the man. She's supposed to feel safe with you. She's supposed to be secure with you. Whether there are many women who won't agree, but many will in a perfect situation, in a perfect world, a woman is made to seek security. Yes, they've been put in a position these days to seek security by themselves, but it's a wonderful feeling. Even for those who gain the security by themselves to know that they have a man who is secure and brings a greater level of security. So I'm not saying you have to sit down and I'm going to wait for a man to make me secure. But then again, you don't want to be secured by your own and beat him down saying, I don't need you. It's deep down in a perfect world. A woman wants to be secured. And it's so nice to have a man who wants to do the job he's supposed to do. And only then will you become the woman that you are made to be. But you can get your security for yourself. I'm not, I'm not saying to wait around to get your house or get your car or get your career going on. You know, that being said, since these men don't seem to understand that you're pushing your woman away when she fears you, when she's afraid of you. Why do you treat her this way to make her afraid of you? She is supposed to run to you when she feels fear. You should not be the source of her fear. Number one, that's the perfect way to get her to want to leave you. Some won't even tell you. You'll come home and the apartment or the home is empty or she's just gone and never comes back. Or she might have harbored this feeling for many, many years. You know, some women will go and have affairs. You know, we react different ways. And oh, if she you, she gets caught having an affair from that abusive man, now he has a reason. But we're only human. If you tell a kid that he can't go to the bathroom, you can't get mad when you see the poop or the piss coming down the side of their leg in public. We're only human beings. We have needs. And that's not right. The other thing I wanted to think about or talk about briefly and touch on, and let's see what comments we have with this, is that why do we put so much faith in a restraining order, a piece of paper? Most of these guys take that as a challenge, and they're not going to acknowledge it anyway. That's like, you know, holding up the cross signal in front of a demon or a vampire. It only works in the movies. This does not work in real life. I've beat my head down so many times trying to figure out what could be done. What could, we, what could be done? We have social media. We have a lot of brilliant minds out here. We need to put our heads together to figure out what could be done that's more effective than a restraining order. To keep somebody from harming somebody. If anything, to me, that seems like an accelerant to piss that person off to say, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And so many people who are abused, and I say people because men are abused also. I'm only speaking of it as a woman being abused because of the story that I spoke about. But but don't don't think that I'm I'm I, I'm not thinking about the males who are abused. Right. But. You know, some of them are so beat down. Some of them are so sucked out and so many of them stay in those relationships. They don't always result in the physical death. But the one thing I want to say is that so much of their beauty and their brilliance and their potential for life is killed while they walk around as a zombie. I've known women on a personal level like this. 
And as I drive my bus, I overhear the stories. I see the body language. I see the abuse, the verbal abuse, the domineering, I own you type of attitude. Yes, if you look, you can see it. A lot of these men, they walk in front of their woman. They're not even acknowledging them. And they boss them around. And one little thing that they demanded, if it's not done, oh, you have some hell to pay. You know, the signs are there. And and the funny thing about it is, with these abusers, nine times out of ten, or 99 times out of 100, these guys are the sweetest, the, the most charismatic, the most charming, the most caring. They, they, they just make the woman's heart flutter. He comes off as Mr. Right. He, you see, these guys have abilities, right? And they can kind of hone in on what you need. It's like that little gadget that the locksmiths use or guys who break into homes. And it's like they stick this thing in when you don't have the key and you're trying to make the key or open the door and it fills in where it's needed to be, where it needs to be filled. And it, it just tumbles at that lock the right way and it opens up. Well, they can sense it. And, and this is a spiritual, I don't want to say it's a gift because it's something that he, he usually used for something bad to abuse you. But, but it's almost like a, a pimp and a preacher. They both have the same abilities, the, the charisma, the, the, the words and know how, knowing how to speak and reach you and touch you deep. But one uses, uses it for one thing. And what, but you know what? These days, pimps and preachers are the same thing. But they do have the same gift. And the good preachers do have the same gift. It's just that they chose to use it in a more positive way for those who have. Because preachers on the Lance Curve show, they're not really getting some any good press. <laughs> the recent stories that I've been talking about, right? But they have this ability to get to you. And when you're deep down in the abuse, that person seems like they never existed when you think back. This sweet person who charmed me. And then that makes them feel even more depressed, the victims, that they've been had this way. You know? And they start to think back, but it's it's sucking their life force. It's not just the physical abuse, right? But it's the mental, it, it, it's, it's the verbal, it's, it's the emotional, the spiritual. They are a spiritual leech. And for whatever reasons, I don't know because I don't think that way. But for whatever reasons, they have plugged into you and they're sucking the life force out of you. And, and the world will look different to you. And you will lose yourself in this person, not in a good way, you know, because when a person is, is a giver and you're a giver and you have two people who are givers, you're just giving each other and you're full with love and, and enthusiasm and you become a super version of yourself. But when one person is taking from you like this, you, you, you may be able to maintain a facade for a little while, right? But after a while, friends will notice it. It's like, listen, sweetheart, you, you, you're not looking like yourself. And so now because you feel so ashamed that you're being abused and you know that's what it is and you don't want them to trace it and find out that that's what it is, you begin to cover for him because you're embarrassed that you're in a, in a relationship that's not very happy at all. It's not life-giving at all. Any good relationship will enhance your life. You see, and you will have disagreements and you will have ups and downs and you will have disputes. Yes, you will have that. You will have some hot disputes, hopefully not anything physical, which I don't condone. Mrs. Skurve can tell you I have never laid a hand on her in any way that I'm not I'm not supposed to. We can be playing or running around a house and my hand goes up the wrong way and it may touch her a little too hard. And I'm like, oh, baby, please. Are you hurt? Are you, please, please. Are you OK? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Any man does not want to bring his woman pain on any level, on any level. Right. You don't want to see a cry because of physical pain, because of emotional pain, because of mental pain, because of spiritual pain. She's delicate. And many will say to me, well, I'm not done. Well, yes, you are. Look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grown behind man and I have emotions and I'm delicate on certain levels. So you're not going to tell me as a woman that you're not delicate. Let's be real. Men cry. Men hurt. 
And I know if I cry and I can feel hurt, you feel the same too. So we need to stop the games between each other, between the sexes, especially black folks. We got enough riding on us in this society. And we need to stop abusing our women. If you got that crap in you, man, you need to check yourself. Because someone else can love that woman when you can't. And if you have all of this insecurity or baggage from the past in your life, before you get into anything else, you need to correct it. You need to clean it out. Clean house. How would you like to move into a new home or a new apartment and the people before it didn't clean out? And you lie. You say you have no baggage. You know when you have baggage or not. It's not it's not for you to dump on that woman and make that woman pay for everything you've been through in your life before because you didn't want to clean house mentally, spiritually, physically and emotionally. That is so inconsiderate. And I see that. And you view women a certain way. You are to use them. They are possessions. And like Minister Farrakhan said, every time he sees what the world would call a no good woman, it's because of a no good man. I'm not bashing the men, but that is the truth. So even when you are in the company of a woman, love her. Love her. Righteously love her. Show her caring show her kindness show her understanding show her security be an upright example of what a real man should be and you doing this is not because you want to get between her legs because you might be breathing life into her and she might have that man in her life who's sucking the life out of her and maybe just maybe what you do for her righteously with righteous love may save her life in the end. Make sure to check out the boldest blog at landscurve.com and follow Scurve on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube under Lance Scurve.